Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Esper Aggro. What's going on guys and welcome back to another standard gameplay video before we jump into talking about today's deck I just want to say I know we did not get gameplay video up again yesterday uh, Unfortunately the last couple weeks and unfortunately next week as well has been quite busy uh, Getting into some busy stuff busy season with work in particular and so I'm trying to get pre-recorded for everything We're gonna try and push and make sure that we don't miss too many days uh, But if we drop a day or two here and there just be aware that I do know unfortunately it's just a timing thing I'm gonna do the best I can to solve that issue but uh, we just have a lot of work stuff going on and obviously I have to prioritize my job a little bit here uh, but we are gonna jump into gameplay today guys and we do have Esper Aggro this is brought to you by MTG Malone uh, and I found this over on Aetherhub. If you don't know, obviously, MTG Malone, go hang out with him. He's freaking amazing. He builds some of the best decks I've, I've ever seen. Uh, but he posted this over on Aetherhub as one of the easiest decks to get to Mythic with. Uh, and I think he set himself up for exactly this, which is just an amazing, amazing strategy. Uh, it features a lot of the mono white kind of build pattern that you would expect that really does a great job of taking over in best of one. But it also has a bit more longevity with things like Rafine and Liesa, uh, Lisa, Liesa, uh, the Meat Hook Massacre, Vanishing Verse. Like it's got the pieces to kind of help control the game while still being a very aggressive deck. Uh, and so we'll talk through some of these. We, we won't harp on it too long because I think most of us kind of know this deck, uh, the mono white core of this deck. So we've got the Hopeful Initiate, of course, is our turn one. Uh, turn two, we're looking at things like Luminarch, Aspirant, Thalia, which is gonna hopefully help slow down the opponent. Uh, we do have the Sentinel here, which can exile things from the graveyard. I've talked at length about how important exiling is in the uh, current standard environment. Between this and Vanishing Verse, we've got a number of ways to exile right off the bat that obviously is just hugely, hugely important. Uh, we do have a single Meat Hook Massacre. Don't want to overdo this because obviously our goal is to be aggressive. However, we can win the game off of this as well, depending on, you know, when we can time this. So there certainly is some options here for that. I did mention Rafine, obviously one of the more powerful creatures at three mana, one four with that ward cost, the flying, the connive triggers, it just does everything you want uh, and really escalates the winning process. If you can drop this down all of a sudden now, uh, you, you get extra 1-1 one -one counters and hopefully hasten up that clock a little bit. Uh, Adelin does a great job of dropping extra creatures and just being a huge powerhouse threat for sure. Uh, Elite Spellbinder is a card that we've actually talked about on the podcast as being one of the most annoying cards for for uh, playing against because in mono white it does kind of a, a, a color pie wise kind of a black uh, effect where it takes a card from the opponent's hand now it taxes it which is a very white way of doing it but uh, that's an interesting way of saying that but anyway uh, it does a very very good job at slowing down the opponent and that's a really powerful thing uh, brutal cathar of course phenomenal answer to any creatures on the board it just comes down gets something out of the way allows us to attack in uh, and in general, it's just a really powerful card. Of course, Wandering Emperor, uh, one of the better Planeswalkers right now, of course, uh, up there with like Kaito. Being a Flash uh, Planeswalker is just so important, as we all know. Obscura Interceptor is really interesting. So Flash, which is great, with lifelink, and when it enters the battlefield, it connives. Uh, when it does that, return up to one target spell to its owner's hand, so you can play this in response to something, slow the opponent down, and get a connive trigger potentially. So uh, just a really good one. And then, like I said, the Forgotten Archangel here. Uh, whenever another non-token creature you control dies, return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Uh, if a creature an opponent dies, uh, or a creature an opponent controls would die, you exile it instead. So again, a lot of exile abilities here. So all that to say, this deck looks absolutely stunning. Again, MTG Malone, if you don't know, is one of the best, in my opinion, standard deck builders. Uh, and so I'm really excited to try this one out. I think, I think uh, this one will have the legs to do some major, major work on the ladder. So let's jump in, guys. Let's see what we can do. And again, MTG Malone, thank you so much, my friend. I know I generally play a lot of your decks and it's because I'm a big fan. So thank you very much. Let's go ahead. Let's jump right in. All right, everybody, and here we are for game number one. Uh, and yeah, we'll keep this hand. It's a little bit awkward. Uh, obviously, we don't necessarily have a uh, a perfect turn like two. Um, however, I think what we're going to do is lead with the Hopeful Initiate. The Sun Gold Sentinel, we do want to get down, but we want to get it down when there's a card to exile in the graveyard. So 
while it is a good turn two, it's not necessarily the optimal turn two uh, right away. We kind of want to have that for later in the game. So what I'm going to plan to do is lead with the Hopeful Initiate, play the Rafine's Tower uh, on turn two, probably not get anything else down. Uh, and then we actually can just ramp, not ramp, but basically get a turn three Adelin right off the bat if we'd like. So I feel like that's probably just going to be uh, the, the best option here. Looks like a Jeskai control potentially might be a Hinata list, uh, which is obviously kind of annoying. Um, so the question becomes, what do we think they might have here? Um, I'm going to try for the Adeline. If this does stick, it's just a difficult card for these decks to deal with. A lot of the burn does two, maybe three damage. So uh, while there are things like Thundering or Boot, yeah, okay, make disappear. Kind of thought that might be the case. I was kind of thinking about the Luminar Aspirant, but I feel like uh, just kind of pressuring as much as we can was the way to go. So it's all good. Um, all right, let's do this. Uh, let's see. Let's try for the Aspirant. Um, again, don't necessarily expect this to land. I fully expect they're going to have a number of counters here. Uh, and this could be bad for us. They could obviously, yeah. Flame Bless Bolt, sure. Uh, now, the question is, do they have another? And it looks like no. Um, maybe they do, but we'll see. All right. Pinging them. Pinging them, pinging them. Uh, now, though, we do have a couple of cards in the graveyard that we can use here for these. So that's actually quite nice. Uh, don't love that for obvious reasons. Um, let's go ahead and drop the Elite Spellbinder. Unfortunately, that Vanishing Verse is really not going to be very good against any of what they're doing. Um, I think we just take the Fading Hope. It's kind of sad, but <laughs> there's not really a better option. Uh, and all that means is if they're going to Fading Hope one of our things or one of their own things, it's going to cost a lot more mana. Uh, and so while that's not necessarily an amazing thing, it's at least something in the right direction. So uh, sure, they can can do that all right um another vanishing verse okay well i think hmm let's go ahead and attack in we know all they can do is the fading hope so that is helpful we do get a training trigger on the uh, hopeful initiate unless they bounce it which is fine okay yep uh, this might just be a difficult matchup for us regardless. They did scribe bottom, though. That's actually kind of helpful. Okay. So you do get a hit for three in here. And let's go ahead and start exiling some of their graveyard. Um, I think it's this. If they happen to be a Leer deck, we actually do want to just get rid of the non-counter spells. Because, obviously, the Leer just says, hey, you can't counter stuff. Uh, so I think that's definitely the direction we want to go. Uh, curious to see if they attack and then play a second Hanada just to have the blocker. Could very easily be the case, but it looks like no. Um, let's drop Hopeful Initiate. We're just going to basically play out um, everything we can at this point. So let's do this. Uh, the question is, do we race here? And I actually do think that's the way to go. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. Uh, submit zero it doesn't matter i think we're in a racing position at this point uh because we do get them down to lethal this upcoming turn so now they basically have to deal with the elite spellbinder if they can uh and because it's flying they basically are either going to block with hinata or kill it and it looks like they can't kill it so that's very good uh we will go for white here naturally that's going to be the best thing we can do uh and there we go we got the win Awesome, that was super efficient. MTG Malone, we're doing it. Let's jump into a game too. Check out this month's Patreon rewards, celebrating our return to Dominaria. If you want to pick these up, feel free to visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. This hand's a bit interesting. It's a little bit slow. Uh, so we've got some really good threes and fours, but I actually think we mulligan that one uh, as much as I don't want to, obviously. And here we do definitely, I, I think we keep this. So the question is, do we think we need the Spellbinder or the Brutal Cathar? Um, I think this is a bit of a 50-50 shot. So I'm just going to go with one of these and hope for the best. Um, and I think we actually do lead here. The reason being, if we draw a Rafine, we'd like to have the pathway on the black. So we also have the Rafine's Tower for the blue. Um, and I think we did make the right choice then, given uh, what we are finding we are up against here. So... Let's do this. Let's go ahead and drop the Luminarch Aspirant. 
This does take us off of the Brutal Cathar play. Um, however, this does allow us to be a bit more aggressive, which I'm perfectly happy with. So we'll see what they end up doing. It looks like we're playing a very similar just mono white strategy versus the uh, Esper version, essentially, uh, which is fine by me. All right, we will drop land for obvious reasons. Um, let's go ahead and place here. Let's attack in. Um, I think we'll we'll play this. I'm not positive. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have a target, but uh, this does allow us, if we need to, to kind of trade some stuff off here. Okay, so I expect they're going to take Brutal Cathar for obvious reasons. No reason not to, um, and we'll see what they do. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna take it. Not not all that concerned about it at the moment. Um, hmm. Let's see. I don't know that that's 100% correct, but let's uh let's be aggressive here. All right. See what they do. Uh, I mean, this is seven damage, so I, I imagine they're going to want to do something. <laughs> Alright. Uh, and then we just double hopeful initiate. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. Uh, they, they traded off one of their best things with the Spellbinder. Uh, that's really terrible for us for obvious reasons. Yeah. Super good. Alright. Uh, do we double block this so we can block like that if we want just to get rid of it I think maybe that's the, the play um, they're starting to outpower us here so we really can't do too much and unfortunately that's just a terrible draw <laughs> really not good um, so we can attack here we can do this uh, and now, yeah, I mean, that's unfortunately just the best we can do. Uh, if we draw a land, we actually do have the Flash Interceptor, which could be really good against their adversary here, so we'll see. They're going to gain quite a bit of life back here, which is kind of the downside, obviously. And unfortunately, we don't have a good block, so I'm just going to pass. Okay. All right, Brutal Cathar is very good, so let's go ahead and drop this. Definitely just going to take the adversary here. It's their life linker. It's a pretty good card um all right so how safely can we attack not super safely um i think we just attack here uh and if they want to double block to kill that's fine it's not good but it's fine they don't double block so here's the trick we have to consider if they have a brutal cathar there uh or any uh yeah so that is terrible. Um, all right, so we kill here, we kill here, and we're just dead. Yeah, completely neglected the Cave of the Frost Dragon. That was my fault, 100% just a misplay on my end. Uh, was really hoping for a land there too. Unfortunately, we just didn't get one, but hey, it's okay. Let's move on to a game three. All right, guys, here we are for our third game. Uh, and how do we feel about this? I'm, you know, I'm gonna try it. I don't love it. Uh, it's a little less aggressive than some of our other potential hands here, but um, I think it'll be okay. We'll see. We've got the Vanishing Verse, which is quite nice, just depending on what the opponent's doing, of course. Uh, seeing a multicolor land is not a great start for it, but uh, we do have some very, very solid turn threes, so uh, I'm optimistic, we'll say very optimistic. Uh, I do want to mention also, guys, yesterday we began our new Patreon rewards, so we do have... Um, the Dominaria set, uh, which is kind of a look back. This is actually going to be really nice. Uh, kind of a look back at Dominaria. Uh, we obviously have Dominaria United coming down very soon, and I'm really excited for it. Uh, and so what I thought I would do is kind of create a couple of proxies that are um, kind of specific to uh, Dominaria, like looking back at Dominaria and kind of enjoying what's there. And so we uh, we took a took a little little look down memory lane uh, from the previous Dominaria set and uh, did some really awesome player reward specials. Uh, you probably would have already seen the ad here in this video, but just really love it. I think it's a it's a very fun one. Uh, and so super encourage you guys to check that out if you are interested in uh, picking up those altars. We do those every month. Patreon.com 
slash it resolves. Look at that. Uh, all right. Uh, so funny enough, we do actually have the A answer to this, uh, which is just the Brutal Cathar. Alternatively, though, we do just have Adeline as well. I'm, I think we try for the Brutal Cathar. I'm expecting that they've got a make casualty or something. Yeah, okay. But we do force the issue first, which I'm pretty happy about. Um, sure. Annoying for sure, but not the end of the world. So the question is, do we attack? I think we kind of need to. Um, I wish we could play that. That would be awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and drop it, though. All right. So we're basically trading Rafine blows here, <laughs> but we do have a Brutal Cathar in hand, which is going to help us deal with at least something. Um, now, if they keep having Interceptors, that's going to be a problem because we're basically going to just waste mana on it. Um, kind of need to find a, a better out here at some point. Maybe it was maybe incorrect to, to not keep the, uh, the Luminarch Aspirant just because we could have played that with a Brutal Cathar. So even if they had like an Interceptor, they could only intercept one, obviously. Uh, so that maybe would have been a, a step in the right direction. But regardless, um, I think we're gonna do the best we can here. I feel like we had to attack with Rafine so we can efficiently block uh, the Interceptor if we need to. Um, but we will see. Okay, so we know they don't have an Interceptor. That's good. Uh, they do get to freely draw a card, though, which is less good. <laughs> um, all right, so let's do this. Hmm. Uh, I think it's just going to be Brutal Cathar here. Uh, and I'm all too happy to hit this. Uh, we'll resolve and obviously just auto pay. Okay. Let's see what they've got. Uh, Fading Hope or Vanishing Verse? Okay. <laughs> Man, they are just like on it with these. Um, so I think we don't attack now, so that way we can block the Interceptor. Uh, obviously, their Rafine is probably just going to end up coming through for some damage, but uh, they are going to have to spread out the Connive Triggers if they want to keep the Interceptor, so we'll see if they, they choose. No, they're going to choose Rafine. Okay. Uh, that's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. We do get to just block the Interceptor here. All right. Uh, let's definitely do this. Oh, man. Wow, they are just, like, annihilating us. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can't be upset. Like, they just kind of have it. They've got all... Man, that's rough. That's very, very rough. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think if we are playing incorrectly here, because we just have the Vanishing versus removal, and that doesn't hit them. Uh, and so, it doesn't hit their creatures, I should say. So, let's see. Like an Interceptor plus Vanishing Verse, which is not bad. Um, but that doesn't necessarily do that much. We could Hive just to get an attack in and maybe get the tenacious underdog out um alternatively we can just add in and vanishing verse Blech, i don't know i really don't know that there's a right answer here we are gonna vanishing verse the wandering emperor though unfortunately we are not looking good <laughs> Uh, and I mean, I don't, again, we may have misplayed. I think we probably have, but at the same time, like they kind of just have all the answers. This is much more the Esper focus deck. Uh, and you're seeing how powerful this deck is. It's, there's a reason it's at the top of the meta. Um, but man, they are really, really annihilating. So good game on them. Uh, unfortunately guys, that's all we're going to have time for. Let's go ahead. Let's jump into the wrap up. All right, so first and foremost, MTG Malone, thank you as always, my friend. I always have a great time playing your deck list. I think they're such a blast, uh, and you obviously spend a lot of time thinking about the pieces that you're incorporating into the deck, and I think it shows, even just looking at the deck tech, obviously you've really kind of planned out uh, how many of each card you need, those kinds of things. So I do appreciate the uh, the deck building, uh, and again, always sharing your deck list. It's, a, it's an absolute pleasure, so thank you, Malone. Uh, for everybody watching, I really enjoyed this deck. I think 
it's not as good uh, based on that last game. And I would assume just knowing the deck list, I think the normal Esper Rafine list probably has a lot more um, pieces to dig out of situations. Whereas this one is much more obviously aggressive. And so it's very focused on just the creature aspect. Um, whether that's good or bad, I don't know. I mean, I think I would lean towards the regular Esper Rafine deck versus this deck if I was really trying to grind through. Uh, I do think this can get some very, very easy wins though. Uh, I think that it really capitalizes on particular decks. Uh, and I think it does beat out a lot of what you would see in the ladder. Uh, unfortunately, we only ended up with one win here, but part of that I think was down to we did not draw lands very often in that second game. We, we landed on three and really had some struggles there. Uh, but I think also the the kind of original quote unquote or the, the generally uh, accepted tier one Esper Rafine is just so well tooled out. You know what I mean? Like it just has all the pieces you need. Uh, I do think this deck has ways to handle those pieces, but you do have to have that luck factor. You do have to get a little bit, uh, you know, with the, the Sentinels and things like that to exile graveyards. Uh, Vanishing Verse isn't quite as good against those decks. And so you just have to keep all those things in mind. All that to say, again, this was a very fun experiment. Uh, I think it was nice to take that mono white shell and kind of push it towards Esper and see what you get, uh, but still kind of have that core of mono white. So it was interesting. Uh, definitely think the original Esper Rafine is better though. Uh, that's just my view. But regardless, I do appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, we should be back onto our normal schedule. I'm trying really hard not to miss days, but it's just been a very busy time. So I do appreciate everybody's patience and everything. Uh, but we're back. It's great to see you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.